sometimes it feels like I get very similar questions from different people kind of all at the same time. And recently I've been getting some folks asking me about waterfront properties or boat, you know, boating properties, but they really want kind of all of it, a good view, good location, good everything, but it's really not within their budget because really to get to get the kind of the whole package, a really nice house, everything, you're really looking at over a million dollars. So in this video, I wanna cover several boating communities where either they have a community boat ramp or maybe, and or there's a good chance you could get a property on a canal that's in a nice location, close maybe to the beaches or downtown, um, and it really won't break the bank. Hi. I'm Jill Thomas, and each week I bring new videos about moving here to Florida, what it's like to live in the Sarasota area, and then of course, real estate. So if this has been on your radar, this might be the perfect channel for you. So be sure to tap that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and keep on watching so you don't miss anything. And then when you're ready to sort of take it to the next level, you've got very detailed questions, specific questions about your circumstances, about your family, then please give me a call, text or email me and I'll help you navigate those waters. In this video, I'm going to cover three neighborhoods that either have community boat ramps or maybe you can get a property on a canal that won't break the bank. So maybe one of these neighborhoods will float your boat. Let's get started. The first community I wanna to talk to you about is South Venice. Now I did actually go into detail about this community in another video and it was about uh, communities in Venice. So I'm gonna put a link to that video in the description below but I did not maybe go into so much detail about the boating aspect. So if you like, maybe think you like this neighborhood, watch that video because I'll hit a little bit more detail and hit some things that I'm not gonna cover in this video today. So that's a kind of a good thing to check out. First, I wanna share with you what makes South Venice special in terms of the location. It is just west of the trail or 41, just south of Venice, Island and in that community's video about Venice and some other videos I've done about Venice I talk a little bit more about the island because they have this lovely little like downtown area that's really nice and then also they've got the beach right there Venice Beach where it is considered the shark's tooth capital of the world so that's really fun as well so you're just miles away from that it's not a far drive at all and that's great and then also the location is good because you've got everyday shopping you've got specialty shopping nearby of course restaurants all those types of things so the area does offer a lot but now of course you're watching this because you want to know about boating well what's nice about the south of venice area is there is a community boat ramp now you do have to pay if you want to use it but it's only 90 dollars a year so i would think if you're a boater that number to me seems pretty reasonable so that's nice to have that right there then also something else fun about the area is that there's a ferry that will take you kind of like where the boat ramp's at over to the beach there, um, Venice Beach. And to be able to do that, it's gonna cost $145 a year. Now, what I read up on that is that actually covers six people. And then if you do need some supplemental passes for a little bit more money, you can do that as well. So $145 for six people, you can get your supplemental passes. I think that's kind of a fun thing to do. So if you had you know, people in town and you wanted to do some special things like that, that would be sort of neat thing to do. Now, if you need more information on all of that, I'm going to put a link to that website below because they go into more details about other things like like for the ferry, how often does it run? What days does it run? All that kind of stuff. Now, maybe you think, well, in the end, after when it's all said and done, you watch this video, you explore things and you decide, well, I like the idea of the boat ramp and the ferry, but maybe you don't find a house that you like there in the South Venice area, or you just happen to find a house elsewhere, but you would like to be able to have access to that. That's okay. You can still pay to be able to use that boat ramp, but it's gonna cost you twice as much money. It'll be $180 for the year, or you can do the ferry pass as well. So both of those things are pretty nice. I like that. Now, the other thing about this area is there are voluntary HOA dues. You heard me right, voluntary. In fact, I just had somebody in town recently and they were like, what's the deal with some of these voluntary HOA dues? That doesn't make sense. Well, in my neighborhood, they are voluntary as well. It's only $75 a year, but I gladly pay it because I want them to maintain some things. I just like the idea that they take care of some um, items just 
you know, stuff at the front, the entryways. We have a wall around uh, the community. And so I like that. So same thing there in South Venice. It's voluntary HOA. They also have some different events and activities. So if you pay into the HOA, you can participate in that. Oh yeah, and one other thing about the HOA is they're not super strict there with things. So what's great is you can keep your boat right there at your property. You don't need to store it somewhere else. So you can take it right over to the boat ramp. So those are all good things about the boating there in South Venice. Now, what would it be like to live there? Let's talk about the real estate. Now, the homes in South Venice were starting to be built in the 1950s and they span all the decades up to today because there's still some vacant lots there. So there's builders that'll go in there, build some spec homes sometimes, or even people will buy a lot and have a house built by a local builder in that area. So you're gonna see a little bit of everything. They're definitely more heavy in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Um, all different sizes. You got little two bedroom, one baths, but you might have a larger home that's four bedroom, three baths. You're gonna see all of that. And then in terms of lot sizes, they on the average run between 8,000 and 12,000 square feet. I like that because it's definitely larger than like new construction lots, but some of them are even two or three times bigger than that. You know, they might be, you know, 24, 36,000 square feet. So that's pretty awesome as well. So especially if you have a lot of toys, <laughs> um, you have the room to keep all of those things right there. Now let's talk about pricing. The homes in this area run anywhere between, on average, about $200,000 to $500,000. There's a few that are gonna run a little bit more, maybe because of the size of the house, the size of the lot. There's only a couple lots that actually have water view or direct water access. So that's the one thing about this community. Even though it's a boating community, you are not gonna be looking at water from your backyard. Uh, you're gonna, it's gonna be a garden home. So you're gonna be backed up to somebody else. Or like I said, there's some vacant lots down there. So maybe for at least the time being, your property could be backed up to a lot that hasn't been developed yet. So you're gonna see those types of things. But otherwise, you know, between but under $500,000, you can get, um, you know, a decent house. Now, of course, you know, covering that 200 to 500, maybe they're all not gonna be in the same condition. Some things might be pretty original or a little vintage. But some people like that too, you know, if they are looking for that mid-century modern vibe, this might be a good area for that. Now, finally, let me share with you some extra information I want you to know about it. First of all, the HOA dues are voluntary, but there are no CDD fees. So that's really nice because the area's already developed there. Um, now, some properties are gonna be in a flood zone. Quite a few of them are because it is, you know, west of the trail, closer to the water, boating community. Not all of them are in a flood zone, but some of them. And then also some, actually quite a few of the properties are on well and septic, so not sewer or county water. So keep that in mind. Now, some people are totally fine with that. Some people prefer that. And some people, it's just a hard pass. They do not want to be on well or septic. So those are all those types of things that you need to keep in mind when you're looking at properties in South Venice. One other thing I wanna mention about the area is, um, from what I understand, they do permit short-term rentals. So if you're looking for an investment property like an Airbnb, this area might fit the bill for you. So. If that's something that you have interest in, let me know because then we're gonna contact the city of Venice just to confirm that short-term rentals are allowed because of course, I would not want somebody to purchase a property with the understanding of using it for one thing and then later on you find out you can't do that. But that's sort of a nice little option there in South Venice. All right, the second neighborhood is Tropical Shores and this is right in Sarasota, Sarasota mailing address. It is west of the trail or 41. And it is kind of like, if you know where Palmer Ranch is, it's just west of all of that as well. So in Sarasota, we kind of would refer to it as being maybe South Sarasota in this area. But because it's right off of 41 or Tamiami Trail or the trail, if you head north on 41, right away, you're gonna hit Clark Road or really Stickney Point Road in that area. Head west out to Siesta Key, or you can go up to the next bridge at Siesta Drive. Keep going, you're gonna go down right downtown. And so everything's pretty close. And there's some good shopping nearby. There's Target right there, Hobby Lobby, and Costco. So a lot of times when I got people in the car, when we drive past Costco, <laughs> They get excited, oh, there it is. Good, good, good. So that is the Costco in Sarasota there is at the south end. 
Now the boating options are a little bit different than what they are in South Venice. First of all, you can actually get a, a slip you can at the marina right there. And that's gonna cost you $900 a year. Now, as you can imagine, there's less boat slips than there are homes in the area. So right now there is a waiting list, but if you can get on that list and wait a bit, it'll cost you $900 a year to have that. Now, they also do have a boat ramp and that boat ramp will cost $175 a year to use that. Now, let's say you just have a kayak you wanna store. They actually have kayak storage. If you pay $175 a year for that as well, you can store it over there by the water and then be able to drop it in. So that's really nice too. So their options are kind of same, but kind of different than it is there in South Venice. And then you can also keep your boat right there on your property inside tropical shores. And then like South Venice, there's also a voluntary HOA, which is only $50 a year. Now in terms of real estate, again, these homes are older, really primarily built in the 60s, 70s and 80s. So as a result, you're gonna see homes in all different conditions. <laughs> Um, inside this area. Some will be just wonderfully updated and some will be wonderfully uh, vintage, <laughs> to put it nicely. Um, so you'll see all of that and everything else in between there. Now, primarily the homes in this area run, you know, maybe $500,000 or a little bit less. Again, this is in September of 2021, so prices are going up. So let's say you come down in a few months to look at homes and you go, Jill, I wanna check out that Tropical Shores area. The average price point may have gone up a bit. So just keep that in mind with any of these videos right now that things are a changing. So I can't guarantee what the prices will look like, but it's gonna give you an idea of what you can expect. Now, some of the properties there are really directly on the water, like on the intercoastal, they have a great dock, things like that. So those homes are gonna go for over a million dollars because those have got big wide views. So plan on spending more money if you wanna be directly on the water in this area. So there's a couple more options there than there is in South Venice to be able to do that. And then the lot sizes there are kind of on the average between 8,000 and 12,000 square feet, which is pretty decent. I mean, unless you got a lot of toys, you know, some people go, you know, if it's anything, um, smaller than a half an acre or three fourths of an acre, it's too small. So you're not gonna get that too much in this area, but you know, 10,000 or so is pretty decent, especially compared to new construction these days. So that's what you're looking at in terms of sizes of lots. And then just a little bit of extra info. Once again, there's no CDD fees. Once again, you can expect that a lot of these properties are going to be in a flood zone. The one thing that's a little bit different is uh, all these properties are in county water, but most of them are on septic, if not all of them. Um, it's hard for me to be able to look up property by property, but sometimes the properties that are closer to 41, closer to commercial, sometimes will have sewer instead. So that's why I kind of use general terms, but I would say, generally speaking, bank on all of, all of them being on septic. And then in terms of rentals, this is in Sarasota County in Sarasota. So what that means is one month minimum for rentals. You're not gonna be able to get, um, do like heavy Airbnb weekly things there. So don't plan on that too much, but you could do one month minimum up to 12 times a year. The final community is Sorrento Shores. Now Sorrento Shores is a little bit more unique. It's still west of 41 or Tamiami Trail, but it's right between Venice and Sarasota. So if you go down 41, going north or south like that, you're gonna pass it. You're gonna see signs for Sorrento Shores, which is on the west side. You got Sorrento East. I think there's one called Sorrento South. So there's actually a few communities with the Sorrento name over it, but they're all independent of each other. So I thought I could even do a video sometime on the whole Sorrento family of communities. But right now we're just gonna talk about Sorrento Shores. Now, like I said, it's in between Sarasota and Venice and Osprey, which is sort of a, just a small little area. And there isn't a whole lot like right there. It's a, I wouldn't call it remote. It's not remote at all, it's maybe slightly removed. So if you wanted to go to the beach, the closest beaches would be actually to the south. So you could go to the Nokomis Beach, the North Jetties adjacent to that, or then I would go even a little bit farther south if you want to go to downtown Venice and go to Venice Beach. But if you take 41 or Tamiami Trail North, you'll go, you can, you know, again, hit Siesta Key, you can go downtown. Um, when I mapped it out, it takes about 30 minutes to go from Sorrento Shores to downtown Sarasota. And of course it would depend on the time of year and traffic. But just to give you a little bit of an idea of what it looks like. 
Now, the boating opportunities, again, are different here than the other two communities. If you wanna pay to be able to put your boat in the water there, uh, all they have is a marina. They do not have a community boat dock there at all. And so in order to be able to put your boat there in the marina at one of those slips, it's gonna cost you $500 down and $125 a month moving forward and that's it so once again you know there's not as many slips in the marina as there are uh homes so you think well okay whoop do that's my only option so not not good but hang tight i've got a, a resolution for that the homes in this community are a little bit more money than the other two they run somewhere between six hundred thousand and like one and a half million or even a little bit more and here is why some of these homes are actually on water they're on canals so you could potentially have a dock in your backyard so even though there's maybe not a spot you can get at the marina maybe you can get a house with the dock and keep your boat right there in your own backyard so that's what's really nice as well um, so, but you do have to pay more money for that. So that's why we're not talking under $500,000. It's definitely gonna be north of 600 in this community. The homes in this area were primarily built like in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. And just like the other areas, you're gonna see a variety of condition and styles. Now, what I like about this area is on average, the lots run about 15,000 square feet. So they're pretty decent size. I think that's a good thing. And then the homes run anywhere from about 1,500 square feet to maybe 4,500 square feet. And then a little bit of more extra info here. There are no CDD fees, like just like the other ones. Um, in this area, there is county water, but you're looking at mostly septic tanks. And then you are gonna be in a flood zone or potentially in a flood zone, not all the lots are. And then also in terms of rental restrictions, my guess is it's gonna be one month minimum. Um, I was not able to find HOA docs on this community to see if they had specific things happening in there. But since it's in Osprey, I think it falls under the umbrella of Sarasota County restrictions with a Sarasota mailing address, which again means that one month minimum. So you could run it out no less than one month at a time, up to 12 times a year. So to wrap this up and tie all these communities together, I wanna to talk a little bit more about the homes. Um, as I've mentioned, a lot of these homes are older. They're you know built in the 1900s and not always necessarily in recent years. So you definitely need to consider the condition of the homes and that's why sometimes the prices are less money. Um, not even just the pretty things that you see in the photos that you think, okay, yep, the cabinets look pretty decent or okay flooring, I can just change the carpet. You know, as always, you got to focus on all these other things that you don't necessarily notice as well, like the roof, the AC, um, the electric, the plumbing, things like that. Because sometimes with these older homes and depending on what previous owners have done, they might require a lot of work. So you just have to approach it cautiously. If you see something that's a good deal or a good price, probably like that for a reason. So just be prepared to count the cost before you purchase a property. And as I've mentioned in some of my other videos in recent months, the insurance companies are really cracking it down on the condition of properties in a big, big way with the roofs. Like, so even if a roof is maybe in good shape, it's free of leaks, um, an inspector says that there's life left on it, an inspection company, not an inspection company, an insurance company could still deny coverage because of just the age of the roof. And they're also red flagging some of the electric panels. I'm going through that right now with something. So there's other things to think about as well as just the kind of the interesting stuff that you see, or even if, you know, in a listing, it says that the roof is in good shape or it's free of leaks or they had an inspection done. There's a little bit more that we need to dig into. So I just want you to approach all of these things, regardless of the location, you know, um, when you're talking about an older home, you just have to factor everything in. So that's really, really important. Now, if there's other boating communities that you know of that think that, my, you know, I could consider in the future for future videos or that are at decent prices, go ahead and throw it in the comments Below. That would be awesome for you to do. I really appreciate that. Well, thanks so much for watching this video and for your support. And if you liked it, please hit the like button on that video. Until next time, have a great day.